Hi, I'm Will Carlson, and I want to welcome you to the very first AlterPath special. In this episode, we'll be looking at what I think are the top 10 overplayed songs and bands in classic rock. Whatever age you are, I'm sure you're just as sick as I am of hearing the same old songs and bands over and over again. Whether it's the DJs or the program directors responsible for this, I don't know. What I do know is that they're stuck in the same rut, rehashing the same tired songs repeatedly till we're all ready to scream. You would think in this day and age of ubiquitous, on-demand music that there would be some variety, but that's just not the case. Today I'll be looking at what I think are the worst repeat offenders, and I'll suggest some lesser played alternatives as well. But before we get started, I need to clarify some things. First off, these are my opinions. If I rip on your favorite band or song, oh well. It's not a personal attack on you, just the music you listen to, which I don't want to hear anymore. Make your own video with what you think are the most overplayed, or let everyone know in the comments. But be warned, if you're just going to say I suck because I think your favorite band sucks, well then you're wasting your time. I just want to prove such churlish comments. Secondly, the alternatives I suggest may be just as overplayed in your opinion. If you're an obsessed super fan, then you've probably heard my selections many times over. But I've tried to stay in the same vein as what I was listing for the most part, and sometimes there just isn't any logical alternative. In other cases, you may be scratching your head over my suggestions, but if you look deep enough, you should see my reasoning. And thirdly, for this episode, I'm broadly defining classic rock as the music released from the mid to late 60s to the mid to late 80s. It's not music that could be classified as something else like pop or country during that time period. In other words, it's when rock and roll became just rock. And I'm admitting now, there are more than 10 artists selected. There are still 10 listings, it's just that I've chosen more than one band for number one. Let's face it, you probably wouldn't have decided to watch this episode if it was listed as the top 14, 24, or 34. For some reason, people like a nice round number like 10, and so here we are. So now that we've got that out of the way, here are my picks in descending order for the most overplayed in classic rock. Number 10, Van Halen. Growing up, Van Halen was one of my favorite bands. I owned all of the albums David Lee Ross sang on and rude the day they kicked him out. Although to be fair, I know from experience what a pain in the ass some bandmates can be. You get to a point where you say enough is enough and I don't want to see your sorry ass face anymore. On the face of it, replacing Roth with Sammy Hagar sounded like a perfect match. That is, until you heard the result. So now we not only have to deal with overplayed songs from Diamond Dave like Running With The Devil, You Really Got Me, Hot For Teacher, and Panama. We've got the entire Van Hagar catalog to contend with as well. Given the choice, I'd much rather listen to a lesser heard Van Halen song like DOA from Van Halen 2. It rocks just as good as any of their other more well-known songs, and it incorporates all of the elements that make up a good Halen song. It just doesn't get any airplay anymore. I'd also suggest songs from Women and Children First and Fair Warning. Number 9, Led Zeppelin. When I was in high school, Zeppelin were my gods. I listened to them nearly every day, as well as trying to dress like a composite of Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. But then I grew up, had my mind blown by punk and underground music, and generally expanded my musical horizons. And in the course of it all, the rest of the world caught up with my Zepp obsession. Turn on the radio and you just can't get away from Zeppelin standards, like rock and roll, cashmere, black dog, whole lot of love, and when the levee breaks. And I sincerely wish you could get away from them, especially considering the depth of their releases. The album Presence, Then As Now, has been overlooked as a navel-gazing experiment by Led Zeppelin. But there's a lot that deserves consideration on it, like Hot Zone for Nowhere. Unfortunately, even some of the other songs on the release are starting to get overplayed like Candy Store Rock. But overall, most, except for the most devoted fans, will hear something new. Boogie with Stew and Down by the Seaside from Physical Graffiti are also good choices for slightly less played. Number 8, The Steve Miller Band. Steve Miller's repertoire is one of the most overplayed in the history of rock. Songs like High Like an Eagle, Take the Money and Run, Jet Airliner, and especially The Joker have been played to death. Some people call me a space cowboy. 
It's just that for some reason he doesn't irk me quite so much as artists farther up this list. But that doesn't mean I still want to hear him. There's so much of Book of Dreams that has been overplayed that it's a wonder my alternate selection comes from that album. The stakes, bluesy rhythm got a little airtime when Dreams came out, but it's vastly overshadowed by the rest of the album now. The song Sacrifice rarely gets attention as well, and is worth at least a listen. Number 7, ACDC. ACDC records were also well worn in my collection when I was a teenager, personally discovering them when singer Bon Scott was still alive. After his death, I still liked the band with Brian Johnson as their frontman, but with success came inundation. Not only were the newer songs constantly being played, but their early work flooded the airways as well when younger fans rediscovered Bon Scott. Dirty D's Done Dirt Cheap, TNT, Highway to Hell, Back in Black, You Shook Me All Night Long, and For Those About to Rock all have way too much airplay, regardless of who the singer is. Tempted as I was to select something off their first live album, If You Want Blood He's Got It, incidentally one of the best live albums ever, I finally settled on three songs from the first ACDC LP I and many others bought, Highway to Hell. From start to finish, it's a perfect swan song to a man who lived life to its fullest, with the title track and Girls Got Rhythm getting the most airplay. My suggestion is actually three tracks, Night Prowler, Touch Too Much, and Walk All Over You. Bon Scott reached his lyrical best with lines like Too much on my body, too much on my brain, this damn woman's gonna drive me insane, and As you lie there naked like a body in a tomb, suspended animation as I slip into your room. Number 6, Sticks. Junior High was about the span of time that I liked Sticks. Ever since then I've cringed every time a song of theirs has been played, usually over and over again. What's made it worse in recent years is that since South Park spooked Come Sail Away, radio stations have used that as an excuse to play the song. If it isn't that, then it's the ridiculous Mr. Roboto, which I personally think is one of the worst songs ever written and recorded. Lady, Renegade, and Blue Collar Man ran out the unholy collection of recorded tripe from the band. I would honestly almost listen to anything else other than a stick song. But for the sake of this video, I'll narrow it down to a song from the band Styx was always aspiring to be. Yes. More specifically, Going For The One. Other than what Yes released in the 80s, Going For The One was probably the most accessible to the general public when compared to their earlier, more intricate work. Not to mention less played, since Yes is just as guilty of having overplayed songs as anyone else on this list. Number 5, The Doobie Brothers. When I was young and stupid, there was a very short time when I could handle the Doobie Brothers. But that soon came to an end after the millionth plane of China Grove, Blackwater, and Taking It to the Streets. What really sealed their fate to me was when they were on What's Happening in a fake concert with a rerun and the gang getting into it. As with many of the artists listed here, just about anything else is more appealing than a Doobie Brothers song. But I'll pick a song from a band that many people have heard, though may not have known. Sparks. Brothers Ron and Russell Mayo produced some of the most unique material, at the same time as the Doobies were churning out their tired and predictable tunes. For this list, I've chosen the Spark song Barbecue, a bonus track off the album Kimono My House from 1974. Number 4, Leonard Skinner. There were basically two camps when I was in high school, those who liked Skinner and those who liked Zeppelin. I was obviously from the latter. Not only does Freebird get played excessively, but every other Leonard Skinner song as well. Whether it's That Smell, Sweet Home Alabama, Give Me Three Steps, or What's Your Name, I could go an eternity and still couldn't care less if I never heard a Skinner song again. Southern rock as a whole is vastly overplayed, so my suggestion for a Skinner alternative has been heard many times over, just not quite as much. I saw Blackfoot open for The Who in 1980 and was impressed from there on out. Both Train Train and Highway Song have been played to death, but given the choice between those and a Skinner song, I'll go with Blackfoot every time. Number 3, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band If Styx's Mr. Roboto is the worst song ever written, Bob Seger's old time rock and roll is definitely the most played. Anywhere there's dancing, whether it be at a wedding or an anniversary, 
Some idiot will request this excuse that is the opposite of its title. It would be bad enough if that was the only misused Seeger song, but Night Moves, Like a Rock, and Turn the Page could be heard as well whenever someone insists on playing a Bob Seeger song. When discussing which Seeger song we should perform when I was in one of the many bands I was part of, I automatically said none, but eventually was convinced into her strut, which is also much played, only less so. And it actually rocks, which is more than I could say for much of his other work. Number two, Bob Dylan. Let's put aside the fact that for a long time he was considered folk. He's now just as much considered rock as anything else. To put it bluntly, to me, Bob Dylan is the most overrated musician in the history of rock. I'm sorry, I'm just one of those people who can't stand his voice. Stone. Yeah, I can relate to that. I'm a complete unknown, no direction home. Like Rolling Stone? Yeah. How's it feel? It's all right. Hey, that's what... Rainy Day Women number 12 and 35, commonly known as Everybody Must Get Stone, can be extremely annoying, especially if you're not stoned, which I haven't been for a very long time. And speaking of long, why is it his most annoying songs are his longest? Desolation Row, Tangled Up in Blue, Mr. Tambourine Man, and Like a Rolling Stone are all at least five to six minutes long, with Desolation Row going on an unbearable 11 minutes. It's bad enough to be stuck hearing a Dylan song in the first place, but to have to sit through over 11 minutes of it is a violation of the Geneva Convention. When talking pure songwriters from the 60s, I think Sid Barrett blows most everyone else away. Before he was inspiring Pink Floyd albums, he was writing them, finally transitioning to a much too brief solo career. David Gilmour admitted in later years that he did more than just produce Sid's self-titled album, Barrett. Performing and tweaking material to get it suitable for release, Gilmour was just as much a collaborator as producer. But at the root of it all, you can still hear the essence of what made Sid Barrett so amazing. And finally, number one, The Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Steppenwolf, etc., etc. Maybe it's my age, or maybe it's how much my musical tastes have expanded, but I loathe nearly every American band to come out of the late 60s. Born to be Wild, Bad Moon Rising, White Rabbit, and anything from the dead set my teeth grinding. They all just rub me the wrong way. When compared with what the British were doing at the same time, I find it laughable how much these bands are revered today. Perhaps the only American band doing anything meaningful at the time was The Doors, but unfortunately their songs are just as overplayed. So if you're a deadhead, please just steer clear of me with your music and we'll get along just fine. While the Moody Blues have their own problem with oversaturation, they, like many others from the time, have an extensive enough catalog that you can pick and choose a gem just waiting to be listened to. That's why I chose The Best Way to Travel on In Search of the Lost Chord. While it has just enough airplay to be familiar, it can't be blamed for being overplayed like better known tracks from the album, like Ride My Seesaw, Legend of a Mind, and The Actor. Explore nearly any Moody Blues album from the 70s and you're sure to discover other b-sides that musically satisfy. So there you have it, the worst of the worst in my opinion. There are many other bands and artists that could have made this list. Tom Petty, Meat Loaf, Bruce Springsteen, The Beatles, and Aerosmith all come readily to mind. The list could go on and on. But they'll have to wait for another day and another episode. If you'd like to buy any of the suggested alternatives mentioned in this episode, follow our links in the description to iTunes and Amazon. Making your purchases through our navigation helps to support AlterPast and is greatly appreciated. You can now also support us by subscribing through our Patreon account. Be sure to subscribe to AlterPast and never miss an episode of the past you never knew. Also, give this video a like to show us that you think we're on the right track. Read a more in-depth account of the story in the original blog post at alterpast.wordpress.com. Thanks for watching. This is Will Carlson, and I'll see you in the Alterpast.